As we do every week, it's time to speak to the author of international bestsellers, The War on the West, A Strange Death of Europe, Bloody Sunday and The Madness of Crowds. Douglas Murray, let's talk actions and consequences. There are a lot of Democrats who are finding out the hard way the supposedly compassionate, feel-good policies they champion have some devastating consequences. Let's start with New York Mayor Eric Adams, who a month before his election was saying we should protect our immigrants, period. Yes, New York City will remain a sanctuary city under the Adams administration. This is what he's saying now. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. One time we were just getting Venezuela. Now we're getting Ecuador. Now we're getting Russian speaking coming through Mexico. Now we're getting um, Western Africa. Now we're getting people from all over the globe have made their minds up that they're going to come through the southern part of the border and come into New York City. And everyone is saying it's New York City's problem. Every community in this city is going to be impacted. We got a $12 billion deficit that we're going to have to cut every service in this city. Douglas, he went on there to say that they were going to lose their city. Do you think he's finally worked out that the policies he pushed may have something to do with this mess? It's an extraordinary um, explosion from Mayor Adams, uh, because, as you rightly say, Rita, he's pushed precisely the, pol the policies that have led to this. Mayor Adams has actually mm. been on the rel relatively more hawkish end of his party uh, on relation to immigration. Yet, as you said, he himself has constantly said that New York should be a sanctuary city. And all that the southern governors are doing by sending migrants to New York, and relatively small numbers compared to the numbers coming into Texas and Arizona each day, um, all, all they're doing is following through on what Mayor Adams himself said, which is that New York must be a sanctuary city, a city for anyone uh, fleeing from anywhere in the world uh, who wants to settle and have a right to be housed. Um, well, you know, it's quite interesting, isn't it, that if, if it is such a doomsday scenario that New York is now in, as Mayor Adams is now saying, I don't understand why he doesn't like the season finale uh, of a series that he's been working on, along with his Democrat uh, colleagues in New York for years. Well, it's, like you said, it is extraordinary because he's still pushing policies that are going to see more illegal immigrants flood across the border, like suggesting that they'd be allowed to work straight away. Uh, of course, that's going to yeah. be a pull factor. And the Biden administration and, and the border czar, Kamala Harris, who have been uh, uniquely hopeless in addressing this crisis, and we're talking about record numbers coming through at the moment. It is astonishing numbers, more than 2 million annually. But the LA Times reports they're considering a plan to force illegal immigrants to remain in Texas while awaiting their asylum screenings. Douglas, I'm pretty sure Texans didn't vote for these open border policies. New Yorkers did. Why should Texans have to deal with, with the uh, fallout? Exactly. Um, the, the whole issue of immigration in recent years has become uh, what the young writer Rob Henderson has described as a luxury belief. The, the, the people in, in Palo Alto, San Francisco and New York uh, can vote for uh, sanctuary city policies and much more because they think it doesn't affect them. They think it only affects the border uh, communities. But the moment it comes to them, they realize how fast reality can come at you. But this is a luxury belief these people have been um, pushing around in recent years. They want to show how noble they are, how great they are, how uniquely virtuous they are off with products anymore they show off with policies and with compassion but the result is the same if you don't have a border you don't have a state you can choose whether you have a taxation system which rewards the people who've paid into it or a taxation system that rewards people who arrived yesterday and have never paid into it uh, you can do one or the other and it's very interesting seeing these people who thought otherwise now, let's go to the UK, where Tory MPs are threatening to revolt as Rishi Sunak pushes an energy bill 
that could see property owners face prison if they fail to comply with new energy efficiency rules to achieve their net zero dreams. They are pushing, Douglas, a proposal where people who fall foul of these regulations to reduce energy consumption could face uh, massive fines of up to £15,000 plus up to a year in prison. What is wrong with Tory prime ministers nowadays? I mean, can you imagine Thatcher co comp yeah. contemplating something like this? She would be turning in her grave and she ain't one for yeah. turning. Absolutely. No, she um, it, it, she would. The, the, the very interesting thing, by the way, Rita, I mean, there's massive news which we've missed out on, actually, which we should not acknowledge, which is that Theresa May, the former prime minister of the UK, has just released the book. Um, I don't know. Maybe oh, you missed it. Great. Um, uh, but one of the things. Yeah, I did. <laughs> One of the things that Theresa May, who's a couple of prime ministers ago, we re-rotate them every few weeks in Britain these days, as you know. Um, uh, some prime ministers back. Uh, Theresa May has just released a book uh, justifying her record in office. And she said one of the proudest things she did was to impose a commitment to net zero on the way out of office. That is, uh. in the... In the dwindling days when she knew she was going out without any democratic mandate, she she made her successors commit to the net zero policy. She says in her in her uh, new book that she's incredibly proud of this. This is one of her proudest achievements. Well, here we see again the actual legacies of such an achievement. Uh, you, you, you have to do totally unworkable things. You have to try to manhandle the public into policies they don't want, they don't like and eventually you've got to threaten the public. This is no way to exercise democracy. You know, we're meant to have a say in this. It's not our overlords just dictating things to us or threatening us with prison. That's not the way it works. It never was and it shouldn't be now. Now, let's go back to the US. Elon Musk is suing the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, that once used to do decent work in fighting anti-Semitism, but as a morphed into something else entirely. And Musk alleges that their uh, allegations about him, what he calls lies about him and his platform, X, formerly Twitter, have cost the social media giant significant revenue loss. How do you see this uh, legal battle going, Douglas? It's fascinating. The ADL is an organisation rather like the so-called Southern Poverty Law Centre, which once did good mm. many decades ago now does almost entirely just a negative work. These are self-appointed guardians who, who have a woefully high opinion of themselves. They basically operate as a sort of racket. I mean, they go around saying, you know, nice social media site you've got there. Shame if you got on the wrong side of us. Um, the ADL and the SPLC mm. and these others all obey what's known as O'Sullivan's law, that all in that aren't named as conservative drift leftwards with time. The ADL has drifted leftwards and leftwards, and now it's just a, a, a racket of a far left part of the Democratic Party. And uh, what they said about Musk and anti-Semitism was provably untrue, very obviously libelous. Mm -hmm. And they've got themselves into a big uh, uh, problem with this. And what are they doing? What these groups always do, appealing for more funds. Well, yes, they are doing that again. Rabbi Michael Barclay has revealed that the ADL boss has sent out letters to Jewish leaders asking for more donations because of ex-Twitter, inferring that Elon Musk is an unrepentant bigot. It looks it's like more defamation Rita. right there. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. Well, you know, it... There are anti-Semites in the world. There is real anti-Semitism around. There, there, are, there are people across the oh, world yes. who actually indulge in anti-Semitic conspiracies and they need to be called out. But what is the ADL doing? I'll see. They are engaging well, in political I... warfare, using this claim totally erroneously and frivolously. And they do everything, including the cause of fighting anti-Semitism, a terrible disservice. Absolutely, because there is real anti-Semitism, as we have discussed many times, in America, in the West, and it needs to be tackled, and yet they seem to be distracting themselves with these uh, 
demented fights often, uh, you know, putting forward notions like the OK symbol is some sort of sign of white supremacy instead of, I don't know, tackling the likes of Rashida Tlaib or Ilan Omar who are virulently anti-Israel and anti-Semitic in some of the things they have said. Now, before I let you go, let's have some fun, some good news for the ginger and the winger with Megan in her element parting with the A-list, including the Kardashians and Lizzo and Katy Perry at a Beyonce concert. And, Douglas, there's suggestions now, there's reports that Meghan is going to emulate the Kardashians and become a bit of an Instagram influencer where she can charge a fairly significant fee for each of her posts. What do you think about that? Is that a new um, career for Meghan? I'm I'm still unable uh, to um, get over the headline, which has uh, Lizzo and VIP Pit in the same line. Um, uh, I wouldn't want to be in a mosh pit. With, I wouldn't want to be in a mosh pit with Lizzo in particular, uh, or any of the other people mentioned. Isn't it, isn't it just an extraordinary reminder of what the Sussexes actually gave up and what they gave it up mm. for? You know, they gave up a life of public service where they would have had the opportunity to spend their time meeting uh, members of the public, but also extraordinary political leaders and influential figures and, and many other people. And they gave it up uh, to be uh, hoping to occasionally be invited to a mosh pit with a couple of the Kardashians and Lizzo. Uh, what a falling off is there? But to them, this is a highlight. This is being presented as Meghan's comeback, that she's being uh, embraced by the A-list again because she wasn't being invited to all the parties, Douglas, but now she's in the mosh pit with the Kardashians. Uh, this this it, is a, it, a triumph, it depends, a triumph. It depends, it depends if you actually think the Kardashians and Lizzo are the A-list or the Z-list. And I'm sure. afraid to my mind, they're the Z-list. <laughs> I would have thought the A-list was people like, I don't know, uh, the King. Uh, but uh, but uh, that's, uh, that's another story. Well, yeah, Charles isn't taking Harry's calls. We're here. Douglas Murray, thank you so much for your time tonight. Great pleasure as always. Thank you.